Linda Dykes is in Norwich. Hello. Hi, I'm Linda. Hi, I'm James. Come on. To personally inspect the home of a potential volunteer for her army of obsessive cleaners. I've got a big thing about toilets. Mm -hmm. Want to lift your lid? I will show you inside my toilet. Oh. That is white, I like. Yes, yes. I'll be in touch. Okay, bye. 37-year-old James lives with his husband Christopher and is obsessed by the urge to clean, tidy, and keep order. I spend about three hours a day cleaning the house. Always. There's not a day goes by where I don't clean. It has to be done daily. I clean my loo roughly about, I'd say probably about four times a day. This floor gets swept probably about four, five, six times a day. James is so obsessed with cleanliness that even the beams in his 16th century townhouse are hoovered on a daily basis. One of my little quirks. James's compulsion to clean isn't just limited to his own home. Even when down the pub, he can't resist getting stuck in. It's just in James's nature to clean, clean and clean. I gave him a set of gloves and said, off you go, you can clean what you like. You can do the toilets if you want. I, I'm not forcing you to do it, but he went and did them anyway. <laughs> House husband James spends two whole months of the year making sure his home lives up to his own exacting standards. I change my bed linen about three times a week. And it's nice getting into a nice, clean-smelling bed. I think a lot of people don't bother doing that. I'm sure there are people out there who could live up to my standards, but <laughs> haven't met one yet. <laughs> James will be helping 36-year-old busy housewife Jodie, who lives in Nantwich, Cheshire, with partner Roger and their two young daughters. When it comes to cleaning, I describe myself as I will tidy as and when I need. I tend to stash things in cupboards behind closed doors just to do a quick clean. I don't think I have actually ever cleaned the house from top to bottom. This cooker hasn't been cleaned in a few months. Actually, I'm so embarrassed. I've never cleaned my oven. <laughs> the house hasn't had a deep clean in the six years they've lived there, and the state of the home is putting pressure on the couple's relationship. You're cheating. Sit down. I'd rather. <laughs> play with them and worry about the mess. It doesn't really bother me. As an engineer, I'm used to having order, regimented filing systems, places for putting things. To go from that environment to the home environment is difficult to adjust. It gets me frustrated as you look under the chairs and things just get shoved under. And... It's always a fight. It's never nice. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, yeah, it, does, yeah. it does cause, uh, cause conflict. We don't, we don't discuss it. We, we yell at each other and it's quite unpleasant actually. Roger has a high expect well I think he's got a high expectation of me, whereas he thinks I'm not doing the simple things. The couple are now so embarrassed by their home that only close friends and family are invited over. Your mum is a clean freak. I wonder whether she judges us, whether she, she'll look around and go, mm -hmm. whenever I come to see Roger and Jody, um, I always help out uh, I think they've done a brilliant job with the girls, but I think it's been at the expense of the house. The scale of the work to be done in this house, top to toe, showroom condition, would take a phenomenal amount of work. <laughs> I couldn't do it on my own. There's just, that's why it hasn't been done. Um, yeah, we need help. Obsessively clean James has agreed to try to help Jodie bring order to her home. Going into a complete stranger's house, it's a bit worrying. Apprehensive about not knowing what, what I'm going to face. But with his stress levels already rising, how will he cope with Jodie's attitude to cleaning? Hello. Hiya. Hi, yeah. Hi, I'm James. Jodie. Hi, yeah. Jodie. Jodie. Hi, I'm Roger. Hi, Roger. Hi. OK. So, house, got a lot of underlying problems in here, really, like underneath the sofa. Underneath the sofa? Well, never the thought cushions. Do you want to see? Go on. You sure? It's um, You've never thought of, of moving a cushion? No, I haven't, actually, because we just sit there and things get shoved down, and when I do look to go under there to fix it, I just it's too much of a job, to be honest. Behind there is pretty full of stuff, too. Oh, yeah. my life. Um, I haven't dusted it, so everything is. is covered. Boom? I sweep every day, but because it, it, it's the front door, a lot of stuff comes through. And this is this is 
how you live. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've got two small children, um, so it's quite a busy house. Right. How old are the children? Two and four. So they're at school during the day? Uh, one of them's just started school and the other one's at home with me. So what are you doing all day? Sorry. Um, oh. <laughs> Do you have kids? No. There you go. <laughs> no, right. There you go. A, a lot of people don't, um, who don't have kids or go to work full time, don't seem to think that what I'm doing is a job. Yep, no. Um, cleaning isn't on top of my priority. My children are. You're not worried about the amount of dirt that they might pick up and. No, a little bit of dirt's good for them, isn't it? A little bit's good. Not as quite as much as this. Okay. You can see there's quite a bit of clutter and. Uh, yeah. Day-to-day -day living. Day-to-day? Mm. -day. Yeah. Okay. This is the bathroom. Right. Um, and someone hasn't flushed the toilet. Lovely. Oh. Who was in there last? Not me. Sorry, that's the whole parcel of having kids. Okay. Yeah. I am going to probably gag now, aren't I? Yep. Ooh, no. I haven't done the floors in here. Um, no, that's obvious. But see that. it's also black tile, so it picks up everything. Never mind. Next. And uh, through here is the kitchen. OK. So how often do you clean your cooker? Um, I don't really clean the stove and the oven. I never oh, really been clean. my life, you don't clean that no. stove. It, it revolts me, to be honest. I don't like the chemical and idea. You, and you, No, uh, I don't like to touch it. You don't like chemicals or you no, don't like to touch the stove? I don't like the, the chemicals that you put on it. And no, I don't like to do it. Why? Oh, I don't know, it just doesn't... Um, I just cook and serve up and done. Usually it's quite hot there after I've cooked. OK. <laughs> the floor, yet again. I presume you don't clean in here. No. The cooker was bad just because the amount of grease and grime and I didn't dare open the cooker to see what was inside, but the hob bit was just filth. And the floors, they say, were just horrible. I wouldn't like to walk barefoot on those. He annoys me already. He's... he's got no concept of family life. If they don't pull their weight, then the claws will come out and I will be quite harsh with them. Linda Dykes is teaming up with a volunteer army of the country's most obsessive cleaners in a bid to clean up Britain. <laughs> you like me? You are. Everything has to be in line, doesn't it, in the kitchen? Yeah. 31-year-old Christy from Orpington runs her own dating agency from the flat she shares with her husband and two teenage sons. She cleans the flat from top to bottom twice daily. Here's the handle, but for some strange reason, everyone in this house likes to put big dirty fingerprints on it and it drives me insane. I have to have clean in the house. It's my microwave, no fingerprints. Door handles, no fingerprints. Light switches, no fingerprints. Every morning, without fail, I'll get a bit of kitchen paper and go over all this. Everything has to be in order, like the socks, the pants, the clothes. I have order in my drawers, and this is how I put away all the washing. All the socks are folded up into little balls. All the shorts and that are folded up the same way. Oh, I just can't stand having loads of mess everywhere with clutter. Probably get a real muddled head if everything wasn't in order and everything wasn't tidy. I just want everything nice and clean and tidy. Christy's husband, Michael, works as a heating engineer. Shoes! But his dirty work clothes don't sit well with obsessive cleaner Christy. Whenever I come in, she's behind me the moment I walk through the door, cleaning. Yuck. She disinfects everything he's touched and has strict systems in place to avoid his dirty clothes contaminating the home. Hey, babe. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Michael will come in from work and he'll go to sit in the front room, but he knows not to sit on the sofa with his trousers on because of all the germs and that in the houses he's been in. I just have to pull my trousers down and sit with it on my lap, so I don't mind, I don't mind. So it's fine, it just saves me a little bit, eh? Christy obsessively avoids dirt outside the home too. She can't train at her local gym without cleaning it first. I hoover the gym because you're this close to all the flick and the dirt on the floor. So instead of breathing it up, I hoover it. My grandma often thinks I'm obsessed, but she calls it ODC, not OCD, I think she called it. I hope to bring order and cleanliness into other people's houses and maybe I can learn something from that too. Christy will be helping Kay and Dilip, who live in Kettering. Their home was once a corner shop, but since shutting it in 1995, it's become a storeroom for Kay's clutter. 
This is all my holding uh, for about at least 20 years, if not longer. There are up to three million hoarders in the UK, and Kay's hoard is made up of thousands of ornaments and bits of bric-a-brac that she buys daily from charity shops. I can't stop. I do tell my, ask myself, why do I do it? Why? But then I still go out and do it again. The space has also become a dumping area for anything she won't part with. Well, the clutter has gone bad beyond measure. It's got to a point where you don't know where to start if, if you wanted to clear it. Christy is here to help, but will her four-day intervention be enough to make a dent in Kay's 20-year stockpile of clutter? Hello. Hello. I'm Christy. Kay, Hi. lovely to meet you. Welcome okay. to our humble home. It's my husband, Dilip. Christine. Hello, nice Hi, to meet please you. Hi, to meet you. How are you, all right? Cold. I'll show you around, come on. Welcome to this chaos. OK. And at one time, this was a snooker room with right. a half-size <laughs> snooker table in here. And, and did then you use all this? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Look at this, this was my dining table. Wow. <laughs> and that's meant to be a sofa. <laughs> I can't remember the last time we sat on it. <laughs> Shall I show you the worst part? Oh. Welcome to my Aladdin's cave. Oh, wow. You like collecting stuff? I just like buying. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like many hoarders, Kay buys stuff because she doesn't like the thought of it going to waste. There's stuff that I've collected for years. Look, it's, everything is full like this. Do you collect all the vases as well for flowers? I collect anything that appeals to me. If Even if no, not, you're not going to use it, you still I, buy I it. I don't use anything. You don't use any no. anything you buy, do you use? Hardly. Even the clothes I buy, <laughs> I don't wear. Oh, it's the same with I, clothes. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. And here, there's a massage chair that we bought about 20 years ago. <laughs> it's still in the box? I never opened it up, even. Oh, wow. <laughs> My head's... <laughs> right. You've never seen uh, so much stuff. The clutter, it's chaos, it's floor to ceiling. I think we're going to need a skip. Kay's daughter, Ruby, has arrived to meet Christy. Hello, Lovely to meet you. I've been telling them for years, you know, just to get rid of everything. Before Christy gets started on the clean-up, Ruby wants to tell her about an incident that occurred in the old shop and led to a change in her mother, Kay. When I was about six, I can't remember. Mm. Yeah, a few, few years ago, and it was um, she. My parents both were stabbed um, by by this guy who used to come in the shop. My dad got, was stabbed in the stomach several several times, and my mum in the the hand and her arm, her leg, and her stomach as well. And it you know it took them a, a long time to kind of recover from all of that. Did that happen here? Yeah, yeah, it so was in this got house. The memories. Yeah, definitely. Which... Well, now it makes sense. Yeah. People, yeah, they're keeping everything. Mm. So now we've got to turn that room into a nice, happy. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I had injuries to my knees. And my well, legs, I had injuries all over, like, and the doctor said to me, you've got to keep walking, you know, walk a couple of hours every day. So I got kind of bored walking on the street, so I devised a plan, go to all the charity shops, make it more interesting. <laughs> and this is how I got into buying things then. To make matters worse, Kay and Dilip's son then passed away. But then um, my son died a few years ago. I think after that it got worse, I think. I started buying more and more and more. Research has shown that stressful and traumatic events are common in people who hoard. And Dilip thinks I'm doing it to fill the hole, but yeah. don't know. <laughs> who knows? But I just one way or another, we're going to yeah. sort it. I hope so. I think the reason why Kay's done this, she's been filling the voids because of the loss of her son and because of what's happened to her and her husband. And you, to come over them kind of things, you've got to be so strong. And I mean. <laughs> You can't even contemplate what they've been through and how they've come over it, but they have. So that's what equals everything why we're here to sort out this whole situation. Over 30 million tonnes of litter are collected from our streets every year, and fly tipping costs local authorities an estimated £41.3 million a year to clean up. But professional cleaner Linda Dykes 
believes that the army of obsessive cleaners can help bring Britain up to her own high standards. I feel there's an awful lot of places within the UK that are in dire need of help and a good old clean. People just don't take any care within their community at these days. So therefore, as OCD cleaners, yes, we can clean it. However, we cannot do it alone. We need the community's help. Today, she's taking on the challenge of cleaning up Tower Hamlet Cemetery Park, which is in dire need of help. It's got a serious issue with fly tipping, littering and vandalism. Dealing with burnt out bins, vandalised furniture is a frustrating part of my day because there's no need for people to set fire to a bin. There really isn't. There's no need for people to steal the stone or spray a place with graffiti. The park, which includes open space and an ancient cemetery, covers 33 acres and has only one full-time member of staff. Hi, Linda. Hi, yeah. You all right? Linda's enlisted the help of fellow obsessive cleaners Richard and Hayley. Thank you for coming. That's OK. You all right? Yeah. 37-year-old Richard from Sandhurst is obsessed by the urge to clean, tidy and keep order. If there's a spectrum, there's the, there's the messy people at one end, there's the, the normal everyday people in the middle and there's me at the other end. Ultra tidy, ultra organised, ultra efficient. Messy people wind me up. 27-year-old mum of three, Hayley, was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder in 2007. Hayley is so afraid of germs, she gets through up to 21 pairs of rubber gloves and 14 bottles of bleach a week. If the house smells bleach, then I happily will sleep. It's like my little bubble, like, protecting me. Morning, guys. Hello. Hiya. How are you doing? My name's Ken. I work nice here in the park. Ken. Hi, and you are? Linda. Linda, excellent. Good to meet you, Richard. Richard. How are you doing? Hayley. Hayley, excellent, brilliant. Well, thanks for all coming down today. What I'm going to do is take you on a little tour, show you those things we need your help with, so follow me. Oh, let's go. An ancient cemetery sits at the heart of the park, and even that isn't safe from vandalism. Someone's graffitied on yes. the grave. Well, this is, this is one of the things I wanted to show you. It's not nice. I mean, That's it's somebody's a, family. Yes. It's I'd a, be so upset yeah. if that was someone it's, I... Yeah, but the writing on it isn't nice that, at all. That, no. Tell you what's the matter. Hayley's OCD has contributed to her intense fear of death and, in particular, decomposing flesh. I'm just, I, it's horrible that we're walking like through dead bodies. I just don't like it. I yeah, just but you're feel. You're in a group, Hayley. I know, but and I, it's not dark. I don't care. I don't like it. You don't believe in ghosts, though? Do you yeah, absolutely, believe, which is why I'm scared. Like, I believe I'm in ghosts. Like, I do believe in ghosts, yeah. and I'm like, I don't know. Would you feel better if the sex came off that stone there? I'm not being disrespectful here at all. I just don't feel comfortable, and I think that is massively disrespectful, because, and that's why I'm uncomfortable being here, because these are people's families. At the end of the day, I would be gutted if that was my brother or something. Yeah. Removing antisocial graffiti costs the UK £1 billion a year, and there's more dotted around the park. There's a place for graffiti in society, but it isn't no. on your post. It's stupid. Yeah. Hayley, <laughs> do you think you could manage the graffiti? Can I use bleach on it? <laughs> bleach is not the answer to all your problems. But it will clean it. The park also has a serious fly tipping problem. Let me out the rubble, Ken. It's minging. Yeah. It needs to be removed. Don't touch the guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you it's have got a good so many feel. germs. No. Yeah. Burnt out bins are also a blot on the landscape. I've, I've got a big issue with shiny things. You know, once they're cleaned, I shine them up. Excellent. So I think this bin shining would look superb. It would. So I'd it needs agree to be with restored, you. doesn't it? Yes, it does. Exactly. Linda's going to tackle the litter cleanup herself, but she's got tasks in mind that will draw on the strengths of Richard and Hayley, even if it might push them out of their comfort zones. So, Richard, I would like you to do the bin first. Let me out the bin. Yeah, but I want it prestige. It will be. Yeah, Don't shining, worry. gleaming. Hayley, yeah. I want you to do the um, remove the sex off the gravestone. <laughs> OK. Can we do it? Yes, Linda. Yes. Thank you. Right. We will do it. Let's go. Let's we go. break and we're on. <laughs> it's obsessive cleaner James's first day in Nantwich. At home, James spends 30 hours a week cleaning his house. 
Jodie's two-bedroomed house hasn't had a deep clean in the six years she's been there. Good morning. Good morning. Come on through. Thank you. James's strategy is to start in the area he thinks is the dirtiest in Jodie's home, the kitchen. Uh, plan today is get cracking. Yeah. Get cracking on the kitchen first, I kitchen think. Kitchen first. At home, James cleans his cooker every time he uses it. It's, it's, mate, sorry, are you really that sick? Jodie's oven has never been cleaned, and the hob rarely gets cleaned. Uh, <laughs> Even the lid is just really, my hands are like really sticky now. Yeah. Oh, that is going to need some blasting. Oh, you all right? Yeah, no, I just... Yeah, I'll just clap it like that. Of course you can. Yeah, once that's done, I'll just feel a bit more comfortable in the okay. kitchen. Let's try and get as much of that now. Just Down. get all the crap off. Yuck. <laughs> Yuck. Right. It really stinks. Don't you like just the way that it's looking already? Just to No, I don't like it? this. This is oh. vile. But you've been cooking on it. Yeah, but I don't need to clean it. Look at all that oil in the sink. I just think, ew. To clean off the burnt-on food, germaphobe James is taking a risk and doubling up on the chemicals. Kitchen cleaner followed by oven cleaner, which is potentially hazardous. My eyes are watering, James. I'm going to go outside, yeah? Well, put the lids down now. Anyway. They're so strong. They are strong. That smell and those fumes, honestly, still in my nose and boom, boom, boom of my head. I couldn't do it. I couldn't use that stuff. And that's probably why my state it is. Because I, I don't use chemicals on it. I just give it a quick wipe over and, and be done. He's definitely immune to that bleach smell. If he can't smell that smell just now, he's done some sort of damage in his nose. I think, anyway. With the oven now clean, James wants to tackle the rest of the kitchen. <sighs> you got them? Yeah, I can't throw those away. They're Roger's good plate. Dog comb next to cutlery. No, that's a nick comb. Next, still next to cut. Oh, that makes all the difference then. Really? <coughs> yeah, it's pissing me off. It's just pissing me off checking all this stuff away. I'm loving this. You really do have to put your back into it. Like you've gone over that spot quite a few times. That's it's hard work. What's well, taken now five and a half hours to clean, and that's with two of us. So that's a 10, 10 hour job just to clean one room in a house. I don't think she kind of realises the extent of the dirt. And I've just noticed something just there that she's just put down the sink. She just picked it up and put it straight in the sink when she, after she hoovered, and that sink's just been cleaned. What a happy bunny. It's day two in Kettering, and obsessive cleaner Christy has recruited some of Kay's friends and family to help her clear the clutter and rubbish from the old shop area and the former snooker room. Right, it's just basically getting all the rubbish into the skip. OK. The YMCA guys come in tomorrow to collect everything. All the charity stuff? Yes, so we've yeah, got okay. to get all the big units out, and maybe the fridge we need to get out as well through the door, and we've just got to go for it. Over the past 20 years, Kay's been accumulating more and more possessions and, like most compulsive hoarders, has been unable to throw anything away. Oh, my God, I like, I love these handbags. When, can I ask, when was the last time? I've never used You've it. You've never used no, it? I've never used that one either. So we say goodbye to it, we'll give it to a nice new oh. home and somebody else is going to be walking around with the bag. All this Pride and Prejudice videos, I've got to like, keep oh, those. No, Mum, the VHSs, nobody watches VHS anymore. I'm oh, Christy Tepper. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pick you up. Drag her out. <laughs> what At home, Christy cleans her house from top to bottom twice a day. Kay's old shop has never been cleaned. Oh, this is so disgusting. There's, I don't know, I think this is like mice droppings or rat droppings. Oh, that is gross. Right, Look don't touch, that. actually need gloves. Yeah. Uh, right. And we need to, so there's obviously a few mice around here or something. Yeah, then can we, can we please yeah. get rid of this right, now? Let's just get this into the skip. I'll take the front. Oh my God. I'm feeling really sick within myself now. Oh my God, how come I, if I, all that stuff hadn't been on it, I would have seen that. 
I'm not gonna have a clutter ever Yay, again. Yay, Joanna! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! In Tower Hamlet Cemetery Park, it's the day of the big clean. Hi, guys. Hello, you all right? Welcome to Cemetery Park. Thank you so much for coming. Park officer Ken has rounded up some local volunteers to help Linda, Richard and Hayley with the clean-up. We need to get cracking today. I want this park to be a park that everybody can be proud of. Agreed? Yeah, yeah. that's great. Let's get cracking. Linda's put order-obsessed Richard in charge of renovating the Burns Out bin. I think the first thing we should do is probably dish out the wire brushes. Yep. Give it all a good right. scrape down. Yep. So if we all grab a wire brush, right. I reckon that's where we start. Before they can give it a new coat of paint, they need to prep the surface. We're racing against the clock, really. I think we'll be all right. The only thing that's going to hamper us is maybe the drying time for the paint. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Bleach-loving Haley has been allocated the task of cleaning the anti-social graffiti off the 125-year-old gravestone. Local conservationist David is lending a hand. What, do you think bleach will get that off? Is that the best thing to use? It wouldn't be on there because of the wildlife around the area, so we'd have to clean it another way to make it clean. We can't use bleach? No. Oh, man. I am going to put two pairs of gloves on now. It just makes me feel better if I can't use the bleach. What do we do with this? Well, we I've know. never used sandpaper ever. The closest I go to anything like that is like a nail file. This is not doing anything, is it? And it will, slowly. Look, see, it's coming up slowly. How long do you think this will take? Not long, it's actually coming off now. So how are you feeling now? Do you feel more comfortable here? I feel like I'm not going to get haunted because I'm doing a good deed. Yes, exactly. And, and like... John Fowler loves you for it. Yeah. Oh. With the bin now scrubbed down, Richard and his team are priming it ready for a top coat. All right, let's go. Let's prime. We could get Linda over here to talk at the bin and dry it quicker. <laughs> With the gravestone clear of graffiti and the bin drying, Linda's enlisted Haley and Richard's help with the fly tipping and litter. Careful. Oh my God, it stinks. That's, that smell smells a bit like urine as well. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. You make it up as you go along, you do. Are yeah. you going to take them then? Yeah, they am. For goodness sake, I've got bloody um, gloves on. Yeah. I'd... Oh, your size. <laughs> I hate you. I actually hate you. <laughs> Look, is that a poo in it? No, it's not. Well, well that crutch it. looks like it's been weeding. I know, yeah, all right. There we go. Look, that was somebody's pride and joy one day. Oh, it's rolling. Fly tipping is the illegal deposit of waste onto land that has no license to accept it. If caught, fly tippers can be fined up to £50,000. Perfect. That's a big win. I was just sitting there, looking ugly. Now in the skip. It's obsessive cleaner James's second day in Nantwich, and today he wants to tackle Jodie's lounge, starting with behind the sofa, which hasn't been cleaned once in the six years the family have lived in the house. Let's pull it out and see if we can find a body behind here. Oh, my good God. That is more than just junk. That's where my phone went. What? <laughs> look, there's, look, there's food. Oh, that is disgusting. Where, where? Oh, look, bread. I'm, I'm surprised. I really am. I am, too. With bread there, you haven't had mice in your house. This is yeah. shocking. And that's not even halfway out. There's still more stuff under the sofa. There's Bin bag a... needed. <laughs> you are not keeping all that rubbish. No, no. It's all kids. There's not all kids. I'm going to put some marigold gloves on to pick all this stuff up. Do you want your old mobile phone? Yeah. Because obviously you've missed it. No, it's the girl's toy, and I have been looking for it, to be honest. I'll just chuck some more rubbish down there. Well, it's going to go in the bin anyway. Um, that kind of defeats the object. It's right. really hard to pull this sofa out, and I've got two little kids who've just got, you know, other things on their minds rather than cleaning up properly. And they're going to get a stern telling off for this. If I ever see them putting anything behind the sofa again, I'm yeah, on Yeah, but a... you can't completely blame the kids for I it. I am, because all of these are toys. Not <laughs> this all is all it. toys. There is not all toys behind I there. I am struggling to see much more than toys, to be honest with you. I 
really feel like you're judging me now. I'm not judging you. I just think you're being a little bit... How much? Like, a little bit It's really of... hard to pull that sofa out, as you saw. Yeah, right? I know, but... And... It's just so much stuff. I'm, I'm shaking. Oh, this is horrible. It's because good. this is where I live. This is, I'll be sitting, live on this sofa. And this is what I've been living under. It's disgusting. And I'm getting more and more cross with myself. I, I knew it was collecting. I could feel it. I could smell mold. I could smell like damp behind there. I'm really embarrassed. It's, this is full on. It's yucky. I, I would have never lived like this. Never. If I knew that it was this, no, well, maybe I didn't know it was this bad, but I've just been like hiding behind it. Well, you knew it was this bad, sweetie, because that's why you called in my help. Oh, I've just changed my mind now. I don't want to do it. It's just a bit of clutter. Okay. I just need a minute. I don't want to do it at the moment. It's disgusting. I'm gonna look like a Do you want me to keep sweeping? Shall I keep sweeping? Yeah. I'll unplug this. The things that James was saying, um, like, it was surprised how there was no rats and mice there, um, really hit a nerve with me. How gross and how filthy. He truly looked disgusted and um, shocked. I just want him to go now. <laughs> Hi, James, I'm back. There you go. It's weird, I feel like we've swapped personalities, James. How do you mean? <laughs> well, you're all relaxed and happy about it, even when... And I'm the one who's all stressing and getting upset about it. A couple of things you pointed out, like rats being in there, that was like a trigger to me. And all of a sudden I'm going, <gasps> is he right? And it's not right, actually, because we're here, we've cleaned it up, we didn't... There wasn't anything foul in there. Immediately I could see there wasn't. There was just kids' toys and a bit of toast. I think you're all wrong. I think you got upset because you're embarrassed. All I can say is I just felt like a mirror and I just absorbed all your energy. That's not a nice place to be and I'd, I wouldn't want to live like that. And I don't want you to live like that either. I wouldn't want to live like this. <laughs> no. <laughs> Counselling would probably help you. Oh, no, so, no. We don't do counselling. Mm. Never. Never in a million years would I do counselling. I'm, I'm seeing faults in myself. I've seen that I've kept my eye off the ball and I'm just hoping the journey can be the same for you. Hmm. Right, anyway, let's get on with it. I don't know why Jodie said those things to me. Quite frankly, I don't care, because I wouldn't live in such a filth hole anyway. Uh, it was trying to rebuff slightly from the embarrassment of what she saw and put, it, put kind of slight blame on me. I don't think I need counselling. Uh, personally. He's in complete denial. He just, I am me, this is me, I'm not going to change. Um, it's really frustrating. But he just won't see it. He doesn't see what his effect has on people. He just wants to crack on and get on with it today and go, I think. I don't think he really is too bothered to look at his issues. In Tower Hamlets, the clean-up of the cemetery park is almost over. This, this is the finishing touches. A council official is due any minute to inspect the work, so Linda and her team are up against it, and Haley's finally been let loose with the bleach. Can you smell that? Oh, my good Lord, I love it. Head of Parks, Michael Rowan, has arrived to check out the team's work. Michael, I'm Richard. Good, good to meet you. you. How you doing? You all right? Yes, we've been busy today. The ancient headstone, which was defaced with graffiti, has now been returned to its former glory, and the park signage is now free of graffiti too. So we've had a bit of elbow grease and graffiti remover on there. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, Brilliant, thank no, you, no, well good. done. Big difference. Linda and the clean team have done a litter pick of the park, and the area which was blighted by fly tipping is now clear. This looks different. Are you oh, pleased? Yes, you think it is good? It doesn't look like the same thing at all, does it? No. no. Oh, nice one. <laughs> Great job, guys. Fantastic. And the burnt-out bin has been scrubbed down, primed and repainted. 
we've transformed the bin. I mean, it was looking terrible, but I think you'll agree it looks it looks a bit better. It looks a lot better. It looks brand new almost. Yeah, well done, guys. Good job. Thank you, sir. Mm, Thank indeed. You. It's a cleaner, nicer environment for people to enjoy. Yeah, I feel great. Within four hours, we have absolutely transformed this park into a place where people can come and feel good about themselves, feel happy about it. My army of OCD cleaners have exceptionally excelled themselves today. We did it! We <laughs> In Kettering, Christy and her team of helpers have almost finished clearing out Kay's old shop and former snooker room. Getting all the ornaments oh off my the God. village so that we can clean. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, okay. I felt a bit lost because I've had I haven't had anything to clean. It's just been moving stuff. So now this is where I'm just gonna go through like a whirlwind. I'm at home with the smell. Yeah. It's my favourite smell in the whole world. If my husband wore it as aftershave, well, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love the smell. She said she cleans her house top to bottom twice a day. Twice a day. Don't you have anything else to do? Yeah, I run my own business. I've got a dating agency. Then I run my husband's business. My... Would you do this twice a day? The whole of it? If I lived here, I would. No. Yes. Yeah. No. Everything would be done every day. Do you have a, a fear of germs, Christy? I don't really have a fear. I just don't wish to associate with them. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't have them in my house. Your immune system needs practice. You know, not all germs are bad. You need some of them around mm. still for your immune system to get practice. I never get ill. Germs are part of the creation. They're part of yeah. us. Stop being afraid of them. Look, look what it's it says. Look, look, I was just reading this. Look, look, what it did it up. Work, but don't forget to live. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in bed by yeah, half eight with so, a hot chocolate by so, night. That is so appropriate. <laughs> just to you, just okay, to you. Okay, yeah, okay. Sure. Now, this is, yeah. that's my point. You're doing house twice a day, then you're doing running all these businesses. Where is the time for you? I don't have time for me. Please find time for yourself. You're really making me feel sad, really sad. Oh. Everything needs to be yeah. kept clean, but not obsessively. Your children are teenagers now, and before long, they'll be gone. Enjoy them while they're there with you. That's, that's the only tip I can give you. Kay lost her son when he was a teenager, and her advice has left an impression on Christy, who suffered the loss of her mum when she was younger. I actually accept now that I've probably been cleaning all this time because of my own losses and I need to let it go. I actually thought nothing would ever make me stop cleaning and now I realise I've been cleaning the same reason as Kay's been cluttering and collecting things to fill a void and I've been doing exactly the same for different reasons. In Kettering, it's the final day of the clean for Christy. In her own home, she's been unable to live with any mess or dirt, which has meant obsessively cleaning twice a day. But in her hotel this morning, something has changed. Come and have a look at my messy room. <laughs> I've never ever have anything on the floor like this or anything all over the sides. And I'm, do you know what? I don't care. That's the way I'm feeling. Oh, hello, you're here already? Yes. I've got have many things to tell you. Really? I left really? all my wet towels on the floor in the hotel room wow. this morning. <laughs> that's, that's... I'm a mess, I don't care. It's gone in, it's sunk in, I promise. Yeah. <sighs> so happy. You look so much happier this morning. <laughs> See, look at that. No, I don't sense any tension from you. And how is your head feeling with it all? It's OK, it's fine. Yeah, it's feeling much better. We haven't yeah, finished, and this great. is just the beginning, OK? Thank so you. Thank we'll you very much. We'll get on with it, OK? Thank I'll you. See you later. OK, OK. At Jodie's house in Nantwich, it's the final day of the clean, and James is on a last-minute push to make sure the place is spotless before Roger's mum arrives to see the finished result. Three days ago, the living room was dirty, cluttered and uncared for, and six years' worth of rubbish had accumulated behind the sofa. Oh, my God! <laughs> but 
That looks absolutely amazing. I can see the floor. It's really good. <laughs> well done. <laughs> oh my god. We um, had to move the sofa out and we found a whole toy box of toys behind it's, there. There was a lot of toys, yeah, wasn't there? Yeah. It was absolutely filthy. We call it Sofa Gate. Sofa Gate? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's spotless. She really has worked hard. I can see there's a lot of work gone in. Yeah. Right, let's move on to the kitchen then, shall we? When James arrived, the oven had never been cleaned and the hob was caked with burnt-on food and grease. Oh, my Lord! That's very shiny. It's very bright now, it's, isn't it? Yeah. It's really nice. Normally, I have to clear a space to make a cup of coffee and then find a cup and wash it. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Jodie. Don't be sorry, it's <laughs> fine. But look at the cooker looking shiny. That's really nice. When I isn't came it? in, I nearly vomited. I have to be honest, I was oh. nearly sick. Now it's all done, just a quick swish round yeah, when yeah. you finish cooking and it'll stay like that. That's what I've done. <laughs> right, um, one more thing before I go. I want you to sit down tonight or over the weekend, sort out a cleaning rotor, no excuses, because I don't want to come back. Yes, sir. All right. OK, good luck, Roger. All okay. the best. All right, see you later, you. Good luck. See you. And keep up the good work. Bye. Bye. It's like a different house. It looks fantastic. It's really clean and shiny and sparkly and tidy. It's lovely. It's been a really good learning curve for me. Yeah, and on those days when you do have problems, and it's, I've got to step up and, and uh, pitch in more than, more yeah. than I have been. Yeah. I feel like I've just moved in again. That's exactly how I feel. I've just, like, moved out and moved back in. Yeah, I think everyone should have an obsessive-compulsive cleaner in their life. It, it's done us wonders. Yeah, just like a fairy godmother. I'm proud of myself for the oh. things that I faced which would have freaked me out before. I have went into that kitchen and cleaned a cooker that I wouldn't have touched before, cleaned the back of that sofa that was horrible that I wouldn't have even gone near. Even having a cup of tea in their house was a massive step for me. So I'm really proud of what I've achieved. I'm really impressed with Jodie now. I think she's moved leaps and bounds on this week. And now that she's seen the finished result, I really do think that she will keep it up. In Kettering, Christie's time at Kay's is almost over. Now that the old shop area and former snooker room have been cleared and cleaned, it's time for the finishing touches. Kay's daughter, Ruby, has come to see the results. Oh, my God! <laughs> Just four days ago, Kay's clutter covered every surface and the old shop space was lost under thousands of bits of bric-a-brac. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Hello! Hello. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, this is... Oh, my oh, God! Do you recognise it? Jesus! Oh, no, all this is... God! God, they've been at it all day today, all day. <laughs> Whoa. This is amazing, man. Yeah, it's Christy need to It doesn't thank. even thank you so no. much, Christy. Oh, yeah, I'm really calm. <laughs> With the space free of clutter, Kay now has a room in which she can relax. Is your head still muddled? No, I feel, feel quite relaxed and at peace, really. I could just sit and meditate now. You can go like this too now. Oh, <laughs> it's lovely. And the former snooker room is now a usable space which the whole family can enjoy. But what do you think of this room? It's amazing, like, and it's so warm in here as well. And this, the snooker table, it is, isn't it? Hey, guys, time to eat. Hey. Oh, I'm over the moon with everything we've achieved. Everyone's done a brilliant job, and the main point is Kay's really happy. It's taught me so much, and I don't actually think I want to clean anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've learned. Life's too short.